Hi everybody, how's everybody doing today? Feeling good? Trying to stay out of the heat? It's much nicer in the studio here. It's, it's very cool. Thanks for the air conditioning, Dave. Appreciate it. We paid our taxes. <laughs> These guys paid our taxes. <laughs> yeah. Um, How's everybody feeling about this stuff? Are you uh, feeling a little overwhelmed these days? Okay, good. That means, uh, means you're paying attention. You're in the right spot. Okay, this stuff is very challenging. It should be very time consuming. And just do your best to absorb as much material as you can. The point of this couple of chapters that we've been dealing with is the idea that changing one field affects other fields. Okay, so changing the magnetic field led to a changing of some sort of electric field. We called it the EMF, right, the electromotive force or a voltage. But it's this idea that these things are actually going to talk to each other. Okay, and so this is where we're heading. <clears throat> the next topic, therefore, is just that, electromagnetic waves. Okay, we are now going to combine both of these things, electricity and magnetism, into one concept, electromagnetic waves. Okay, charge moving up and down, that is a lot like a current. If I take a wire and I run current up and down, then this current I would look like positive charge heading down and negative charge heading up. These are equivalent pictures. But we know what happens when we have current. What happens when we have current? What do we generate when we have current in a wire? It was the title of a couple chapters ago. Magnetic fields, right? If we have current, we have magnetic fields. I leads to magnetic fields B. And so there is a magnetic field that develops here. How does it develop? Like that. Okay, and you can pick the direction based on the right-hand rule. Remember, you put your thumb in the direction of the current. So stick your thumb down in the direction of the current. Your fingers are going to wrap around in the direction of B. Okay, and so we get a B field that looks like that for this particular picture. That was this case. But when those charges come together, now the current is equal to zero. And if the current is equal to zero, then B is equal to zero. And later on, as we keep going, the current's going to change direction. The current is going to be going up later on. And if current is going up, we again develop a B field, and you use your right hand rule, and now it's wrapping around this way. Okay, thumb in the direction of the current, fingers are wrapping around in the direction of the B field. Okay, again, it's going to be confusing if you look at me in the glass here, so look at the computer monitor when I do this, and confirm that your thumb going up gets you a B field that wraps around like that. Okay, and when you do it in the monitor, make sure you use your right hand. Does everybody see that one? Okay, so the charges went up and down. We developed an E that oscillated in time, but now we have a current that's going up and down, and we're going to develop a B that oscillates in time. And so if we draw B as a function of time, it is going into and out of the screen. If I think about just one side of this, B is now going to be like this. Okay, and this is supposed to be coming out of the screen and into the screen over and over again. And we're trying to draw it in the third dimension here. 
So the E field was going up and down, but the B field is orthogonal to that. It is 90 degrees to that. So if the B field's in the plane of the screen, then if the E field is in the plane of the screen, then the B field is in and out of the board. All right. But maybe we can put all this stuff together. 